at least three police officers and four insurgents were killed in an attack on a police station on Monday in the district of Banu in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, Pakistani police said. No one has claimed responsibility for the attack. Suspicion is likely to fall on the Pakistani Taliban, who often target security forces across the country. We came to know that armed militants attacked nearby police station, said local resident Rematullah Khan. Intermittent fighting is still going on and there are reports of gun fires between the police and militants, as a result of which police and militants have been killed, as well as the city of Banu being completely shut down. Earlier in the day, China's Premier Li Chang arrived in Islamabad for a two-day meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization starting on Tuesday to discuss how to boost security and economic ties between the member states. Li is the most prominent leader attending this week's meeting in Pakistan of a regional security grouping that was founded by Russia and China to counter Western alliances, despite a surge in militant violence in the country. During his three-day visit, Li will also meet with Pakistan's President Asif Ali Zardari, Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif and senior political and military leadership. Pakistan's foreign ministry said the SCO meeting will also be attended by representatives of Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. It said Iran's vice president and the Indian foreign minister would also attend. چې پته ولګې نه نو دلته د سایډ کې پریس لاین دی هغه ته تر خګر راغلی او هغه په دلته حمله کړې ده نو تر اوسه پورې چې کومې دې ډز دي او سم روانې دي وقفه وقفه سره د نن سایډ نه چې کوم دي اوازونه راځي او تر اوسه پورې کسان په کې ژبل شوي هم دي او هغه نه علاوه د بنو چې کوم بازار دی بازار په مکمله توګه باندې بند شو The Ukrainian armed forces managed to almost completely neutralize the threat from Russian FPV drones using electronic warfare systems. This fact was sadly acknowledged by Russian propagandist Alexei Chadayev on air at Komsomolskaya Pravda radio station. He argues that the Ukrainian armed forces have an advantage not in the number of FPV strike drones, but in their use. Less than 5% of Russian UAVs reach their target. If we take such a narrow tactical sphere as disposable FPV kamikazes, then they are comparable. Only those that we have are effectively jammed by their electronic warfare. I cited statistics. 160 launched and 5 hits on target, 50 near the target, the rest were shot down by electronic warfare. Chadayev complained. Such vulnerability of Russian FPV drones to electronic warfare systems is the result of the inflexibility of the Russian military-industrial complex. The complex is not able to modernize its weapons quickly enough, adapting to the situation on the battlefield. Recall the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine is often referred to as the world's first large-scale drone war. But far the most prevalent type of drone on the Ukrainian battlefield is the first-person view drone, a type that our company sells in Ukraine and elsewhere. Despite their relatively low cost compared to other aerial platforms, FPV drones possess a number of capabilities that have resulted in a dramatic shift in our understanding of modern warfare. Given their navigation capabilities, these drones have become the preferred platform for mounting explosives and executing targeted strikes. 
Originally emerging from the realm of civilian hobby drone racing, FPV drones have robust motors and frames that are built to withstand the rigors of high-speed races and multiple crashes. Relative to their fixed wing cousins, copter-type drones have greater maneuvering capabilities which, in the hands of skilled pilots, convert into precision targeting unique to FPV drones. It is uncommon for pilots to fly their drones through the window of a building or into the open hatch of an armored vehicle, unleashing an explosion on exposed personnel inside. FPV drones are also well suited for targeting specific equipment like optics, radars and antennas mounted on the exteriors of armored vehicles. In response to the successes of the Russian military industrial complex, the Ukrainian military has upgraded its drones, equipping them with thermite charges. These weapons are capable of releasing molten metal that burns at a temperature of 2,427 degrees Celsius, which is why the Ukrainian Armed Forces soldiers have dubbed them Dragon Drones. This was reported by the commander of the Ukrainian Armed Forces strike drone company, Vyacheslav. They have moved to a more official level and their supplies seem to have improved a lot. Vyacheslav said, as quoted by the New York Times, the new Ukrainian drones use thermite cartridges. Thermite, originally developed for welding railway tracks a century ago, is a mixture of aluminium and iron oxide. The mixture causes a self-sustaining reaction when ignited, making it virtually impossible to extinguish. The first use of these weapons became public back in early September. That's when video emerged showing one dispersing the molten mixture into trellises that concealed Russian troops and equipment. Additional videos soon popped up on social media showing more Ukrainian units using the weapon that way. Russia is also trying to use similar systems, but to what extent remains unclear. The combination of the searing heat of the thermite and the maneuverability and speed of a drone makes this a very lethal and versatile weapon. We are now seeing it applied elsewhere on the battlefield. At first, the drones were being deployed to burn away the areas where Russians sought cover and under the dense growth. Ukraine is also using these drones to attack armor. Using these fire-breathing drones on other target types does make sense as thermite may not be able to destroy some targets but can certainly damage them and take them out of the fight. Burning alive in a bunker filled with the horrific compound is also one heck of a psychological deterrent as well as being brutally effective.